Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Kathy Groover. And I'm Jason Mefford. Woo! I'm going to do a little something different with my voice at the beginning. <laughs> Wake okay. everybody up at the beginning. Yeah, you do you, man. I know. Well, that's <laughs> that's part of what we're talking about on here, isn't it? <laughs> it right? is. Show up and be you as you are. So here we go. Sometimes I do weird things with my voice. Ah! <laughs> I want one of those like little sound machines. I need to get a sound machine. (laughs) No, you don't. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. All right. Well, seriously, right. Today we wanted to talk about, uh, you know, sometimes you probably make your life a little more complicated than it needs to be. I know I do. And Uh I know Kathy, we talked about that before we started started today right is that you know a lot of times life can get pretty complicated and kind of crazy yep and a lot of times it's our fault right which again we never we don't want to admit that but often it is our own fault right so especially you know again depending on when you're listening to this i mean we're we're going into the holiday season here hard uh which often usually means too that there's a lot more stuff on people's plates yep. right so literally and figuratively ha 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 that was punny and <laughs> i didn't even good. i didn't so plan good. that one man. that's why we um, don't have a sound machine <laughs> so so let's let's get in and talk about that because i know i know kathy you've got some experiences of ways that you've you know made your life simpler less yeah. complicated um, and I'm sure everybody else would like to know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's look at it kind of from the business perspective first. You know, it's like you and I are both running our own businesses. We have families, we have obligations, we have stuff to do. Things pop up that that we didn't expect. We didn't put them on the to-do list. They just, they spontaneously happen. Um, that was my yesterday. <laughs> oh, I hate yeah. that because as you know, I, I schedule things down to the minute, which works perfectly until... The bacon catches on fire and the cat throws up and then suddenly you know, there's a traffic jam or the trash truck is blocking me on the street, which happened to me the other day. I'm like, ah, I only had two and a half minutes to get to the office and now it's two minutes and 70 seconds. Uh, I guess it would be three minutes and 10 seconds. I don't do math. That's, <laughs> I was a theater major, but I did actually come up with that pretty quick to correct that. There you go. Um, so, you know, planning things is great, but I recommend, and I'm not great at this, working flexibility into your schedule, you know, maybe rather than trying to put 15 minutes in between everybody or, or stack people right on top of each other, give yourself a little leeway in between, because at the very least, you can stretch, you can go to the bathroom, you can check your emails, you can drink your water, you can go for a quick walk around the block. Working time into your schedule is one of the best ways to stop the stress, right? I mean, because if we're scheduled down to the second, and believe me, I do this, something's going to go awry, something's going to get screwed up, and your whole day is going to be backed up, you're going to lose your mind. So scheduling in little breaks to make sure that you have that padding is one of the biggest things I can recommend, especially in the business world. Yeah, and from a padding perspective, you know, too, I mean, another one that where where a lot of people get into stress is if you're late, right? And And so a lot of times, again, just like building some of that padding into your calendar, you know, if you're working from home or wherever you happen to be, but the same way, even, you know, if you're traveling or having to go somewhere, right. If you know that it takes you exactly two and a half minutes to get to the office, (laughs) then maybe you leave five minutes before in case the garbage truck is there. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because, because a lot of times, you know, if we're brutally honest and take a hundred percent responsibility, right we're stressed because we're afraid we're going to be late now because of traffic because we chose to leave a little bit later and didn't leave that padding right and we blame the trash truck or we blame the woman who's driving slow and in reality we know that we could have left earlier you know so we have to take responsibility for that um if you're surrounded by crazy makers (laughs) crazy makers that's a good new word and oh, you've never heard oh yeah there are some people that just want to make life really complicated they just want to make life hell maybe it's your partner maybe it's a friend maybe it's a work person maybe you recognize that it's you um how do i say this without giving away too much so thanksgiving 
is can be a crazy time and we're moving into the holidays we're heading into christmas i assume this is well actually air before christmas um and maybe you have a family member who kind of makes things a little bit crazy perhaps you can set boundaries perhaps you do not need to give into the craziness and we had a situation at thanksgiving where one of the people that was supposed to come her daughter was exposed to a kid who tested positive for covid and the mom rather than just saying look my daughter was exposed we're not going to come it became this hour and a half tirade of, well, could they get a test? Who's comfortable with it if they test? And what if they wore masks? And what if they sat outside? And I, I kind of sat back. I didn't particularly want them to be there. And I, but I just watched the family go into this frenetic, like half the family justified. Well, we're vaccinated, so it's okay. Well, she, the, she doesn't have any symptoms. And the kid who tested positive just, just, you know, just had sniffle. He just had a cold. It's like, he didn't have a cold. He has COVID, <laughs> you know? So it's like, so I was watching this justification, then the other half of the family was like feeling guilty. And then one of the others really didn't want them to come, but didn't feel it was his place to say. And, you know, I just kind of sat back and I watched this craziness unfold when anybody could have stepped out of that drama triangle. And Eric and I kind of stepped back because we aren't related enough <laughs> that we had any say in this, though I would have played the bad guy if I had to and said, look, just don't come. But I just watched all this craziness and this inconvenience because now, well, let's take them a test. Well, we should take them food. And literally dinner was interrupted so that people like met halfway and exchanged meals. And I mean, it just became this like cluster of insanity because one person didn't just make the decision. And it was fascinating for me to watch. And I watched the stress and the inconvenience and the uncomfortableness and the anxiety build because one person decided to just sort of not take responsibility. So how can, you know, other than setting strong boundaries, I don't know what the answer to that scenario is, but I know this is common over the holidays with people's families. So setting boundaries, stepping out if you need to, um, speaking your mind, knowing where you stand on things and having the guts to say what you need, I think is one of the solutions to that. Yeah. And even just, you know, as you're sitting there talking, it's, it's like, how, how complicated do we make our life? Because we don't want to make a decision too. Yep. Right. So again, I mean, in that, in that particular situation, somebody very early on could have been decisive and just made a decision, Yep. but you know, so much of the time we are afraid to make a decision because we're afraid we're going to make the wrong decision. Oh my gosh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, alienate or hurt somebody's feelings, or I know I want to do this, but I'm mm -hmm. scared to do it because I'm afraid I'm going to make a bad decision, yeah. right? And ultimately, again, yeah, being more decisive, just making a decision, even if it's the wrong decision, will help make <laughs> your life less complicated, right? Because because <laughs> what can we do if we make a bad decision? We make another decision, right? And yeah. so... It, it's funny because especially from a business perspective, you know, I've seen this in, and heard this from some of the coaches that I've worked with over the time. They said, you know, the, the, the difference between what they usually say, six figure earners versus seven figure earners, right? So people who run, you know, businesses with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of revenue versus millions, right? What's the big difference? And one of the biggest differences is the, the, the millionaire makers, if you will, they decide and they yeah. just move forward, right? Yeah. They, they don't try to make it complex. They don't try to go through this whole decision-making process, you know, putting down a T, T accounts and, you know, doing your little mm -hmm. lists and everything else. Yeah. They just decide and move on. And if they need to make a different decision in the future, they make a different decision in the future that significantly reduces the complexity in their life and the stress right. as well, because then, then they're not ruminating about the whole thing. Right. Because again, imagine how much energy you're wasting ruminating for the hour and a half when somebody could have made a decision in a minute or two. Yeah. It hijacked part of the day and it was so anxiety producing for for some of the people that were there and I started to feel so bad. And that's why I finally, I made the decision. I'm like, look, I, I'm not related to this, but I will make the decision. I will be the bad guy and say, look, I'm uncomfortable with this happening. If that's what needs to happen, I will be the one to, to, to throw up the flag and go, no, this is not going to happen. And I ended up not having to do that. It finally was decided, but an hour and a half later. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, what a waste of time and energy and stress 
and resources and you know it caused so much undue emotion that didn't need to happen and it was just for me to as a coach just kind of sit back and watch all this unfold it was fascinating to me it's just so interesting and it ended up working out um but it was just it didn't need to be that way Mm -hmm. didn't need to be that way so that was that was a fascinating experience so if you're heading into the holidays and you've got a crazy maker that you've got to deal with set boundaries and it's okay to step out of a situation i know we've talked about that before go for a walk go up to the bedroom go to the bathroom go outside go sit in your car go you know it's like there's ways to to remove yourself from that situation if you need to it's okay to take a time out yeah yeah, and there's you know some some other things right that that people can probably do as well right there's there's certain ways now there's people that offer services and do other things that can make your life easier right but a lot of times we we just tend to do the same things in the same way the yep. same process steps because that's what we've been used to doing. Right. You know, we, we've talked earlier, earlier podcasts about your iced tea issue and your pitcher and your my jugs, pitcher. right? Hey, uh, don't talk about my jugs. <laughs> we <can> talk about... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right. No jug, no jug discussion. For anybody that didn't hear that episode, they're so <laughs> Go back and right watch now. that one. Go back and watch the <laughs> resistance to change episode where we do discuss my jugs. <laughs> Jason, Jesus. <laughs> No sound right. machine for you now. See, that's oh, not going to happen. Oh, man. Man, okay. Well, I was on board, but now, nope, not going to happen. Now, no. Nope. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, unscripted. unscripted. Here we go, right? Uh, but there are... <laughs> and unedited, so we get all of this too in the middle of it. I love it. I love it. You're going to laugh in this episode if you haven't already. So there we yeah. go. Yeah. But, but, the, but the idea being, right, is that there's a lot of things that we can do um, or a lot of services. We can hire people to do certain mm -hmm. things to make our life a lot less complex. Yeah. Now, I know, you know, one thing I've been thinking about, because my, my dad is a great example of this, you know, he's, I get my stubbornness from him and from my mother. So I'm kind of fucked mm -hmm. that way. Right. But, um, but, you know, he'll 88 year old man, you know, a little unsteady, you know, different things, but he's been a contractor, right? And yeah. so there's certain activities around his house. Like I finally, finally convinced him to hire someone to come mow the lawn about six yep. months ago, right? But I remember one time where, you know, he, he does a lot what most of us do, which is sometimes we look at it and say, well, I'm not, I don't want to pay somebody to clean the leaves out of my gutter. So I'm going to pull out my ladder and I'm going to climb up there because I don't want to pay somebody 50 bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever it is. So he pulls out the ladder. He gets up there. He goes through the whole thing. He's coming down, misses the last step, falls, breaks his hip, ends up in the hospital, ends up in a rehab, spending tens of thousands of dollars instead of... yeah a hundred dollars right to uncomplicate his life so there's a lot of things you know around that is where we can look around and say okay what are some of the different activities or processes if you will that i'm doing that are maybe taking me more time than it needs to yep or are things i don't like to do or yep. <laughs> are, are things that are causing me stress yeah right and see what are some some ways, what are some things you can do to uncomplicate your life and take some of those things off, right? Because if you hate cooking dinner, right? You just hate it, but you do it, right? Imagine how much of your time each day you're hating doing that. Yeah. What if you hired a chef or or you know, some yeah. other some other way to get past that? it's not only going to, you know, make your life less complex, yep. but you're probably also going to feel better and avoid a lot of that stress and anxiety and other things that might come along with doing those activities that you've just been habituated into doing. And so you right. just keep doing it. Cause right? you feel like you should do it or you have to do it. Yep. <clears throat> I sat down when I was starting to feel so stressed about all my work stuff. And so I sat down and I wrote down everything I was doing massaging people, talks, podcasts, 
other people's podcasts, writing uh, articles for other people's websites and blogs, doing all the social media, do, you know, and I wrote this whole list down and I had this list of like 14 things and I went, well, good Lord, no wonder I'm exhausted. Like I am doing way too much. And so I ranked them in order of what I actually really liked to do. And I looked at those bottom three, which were social media, writing articles for other people's stuff and like contributing as a guest to other people's like radio, TV, you know, that kind of stuff. And I thought, well, do I have to be doing that? There is no benefit for me at the time in writing pieces, taking my time to write pieces for other people's blogs. There wasn't a benefit to me. And I simply didn't like doing social media. So I hired someone to do my social media and the other two things that I didn't wanna do, I just stopped doing, you know, and there was that obligation of, well, you should be doing that. And everyone says you should do that. I don't have time. It's the whole down in the weeds thing, you know, is where was my, my focus? Where was my higher purpose better served? So that's one thing I did is I made the list of all that stuff I had to do. The other thing that reminded you reminded me of is I had a client, she was incredibly wealthy, like Oprah wealthy. And she became a very good friend as she was a massage client of mine. And I was having a uh, fondue party that night. She said, what's on tap the rest of the day for you? And I said, oh, I said, I've got two more clients and I've got to go home and I've got to chop all this bread. We're having all these people over for fondue. And she kind of chuckled. And I said, oh, but you don't like fondue? And she goes, no, uh, I'm just laughing that you're going to cut up six loaves of bread. And I said, <laughs> why? And she said, you know that the bakery will do that for you, right? And I said, what? She said, if you take the bread to the bakery, they will just j -j -j on the machine and chop it up for you for free. <laughs> and I went, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. And she said, Kathy, she said, as you get busier and as you get more successful, you are going to find that stuff like that, you're going to have other people do for you. Yeah. And she grew up in a family that knew all that sort of stuff. I had no idea. So as I found myself that night spending a, you know, like an hour chopping bread into cubes, it, it just it just kept nagging at me of someone else could be doing this and I could see another client or I could be stretching or I could be, you know, spending time with friends. I wasted so much time doing these things that other people could be doing. It was just such a great lesson and it totally reminded me of that. Well, and it's one of those because, you know, the thing that you hear from from so many people, it comes out of my mouth at times, right? I mean, I'm training myself just like, I mean, all this stuff we're talking about, we're all, both of us are working on it too, right? Uh -huh. But, but, but how many times, you know, have you said, I don't have time for that. I don't have yes. time for that. I don't have time for that, right? Well, we all have 24 hours in a day, 168 hours a week. We all have exactly the same amount of time. Yep. It doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Who, uh, who we are, how much money we have, we all have exactly the same amount of time. So how do you choose to spend your time? Yep. Do you choose to spend an hour cutting up six loaves of bread? Because <laughs> that's what you're used to doing. I didn't know there was another choice. I know, right? But now, but now you do, right? And, yeah. and so it, it, it's one of those where, again, you know, like, like your client said, the busier you get, the more we have help from other people and it's okay. Cause, yeah. cause you know, the, the, the other thing about it is, is like with, with my dad or with any of these other things, right. Is that, is that we usually look at it, we get stuck into whatever our story happens to be. Right. And so we'll just use that dad example on the ladder yeah. again. Right. Well, he's, he's a physically capable man. He's always done stuff for himself. He knows how to yeah. do it. He has the tools. He's done it his whole life, right? And so even though he's a little older, he still has that story that says, you know, I can do this. I don't need to pay somebody else to do something that I can do. Yeah. That, that's true. But at the same point, what if you flip the story slightly, right? By paying somebody else to do it, you're also allowing that other person to either serve. Yeah and or earn their livelihood as well, right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, you're actually giving <laughs> by allowing other people to do 
things like that. And I know we've talked about that in, in different episodes before. I remember the the story you had told about, you know, the client, I think, taking you someplace and he's yeah, like, oh my gosh, my car, I would pick up my car. Yeah, to pick up your car. I would so love to do that. Right. And yeah. so you allowed him that that opportunity. So again, it's it's not even necessarily about saving the money, you know, but you're actually helping somebody else and you're helping yourself yeah. by doing some of those things. Yeah. And it's, I mean, to me, there's what, there's two currencies, there's time and there's money, right? And that convenience goes in that. And I would rather pay $5 to valet at the location than to drive around for 20 minutes trying to find a parking space. That's just kind of where I've gotten in my life because I realize time is valuable also. And I don't mind spending a little bit more if it saves me time, if it's more convenient for me, if it's easier for me now to come out of that event and have my car waiting, as opposed to having to trudge 10 blocks in heels at the end of a night, you know, to, to find where the heck I put the car. So all of that comes down to a choice and, and that's an individual choice. Uh, and I had mentioned before we got on the air, uh, my boyfriend and I started doing HelloFresh. And it has been, first of all, it's when we both do it together, it's so much fun. It's like just creating this, we get to create this meal together. And he's not as skilled in cooking as I am because he hasn't been cooking as long. So if I'm home later, he can start it. And like, I got home last night and dinner was ready. It was so nice. And he feels good about doing it. And it's really good food and it's healthy. And it saved us money at the grocery store. Yeah, you have to pay for the Hello Fresh, but you spend less at the grocery store. So it's that sort of balances out. And it's one of those things that I hadn't even considered until a little card for two free meals popped up and something we had ordered. And I went, I wonder what that's going to be like. Well, why not try two free meals? And now we joined, you know, so every week we get three dinners and it's been the most fun, convenient thing. Will we do it forever? No, because you know what? We can always change our mind. But for right now, it's a convenient thing to know we've got, I don't have to think about dinner. I don't have to go to the store to buy a gallon of something when I only need this much for the recipe. It's just made our lives easier. And we all can make choices like that depending on, you know, what our budget is, what our time frame is, and what pieces of our lives we need to simplify. Yeah. Well, there's 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 little micro things that we can do, right? Because because like you said, if if um, you'd never know whether you like HelloFresh unless you do it. Right. So you just make the choice. If you don't like it, you stop after a week or whatever. Right. right. But, but, but there's other things. Right. And so again, I mean, for everybody listening, right. I mean, think about some of those, some of those times do like what Kathy did of writing down some of the stuff. You know, if you go to, every time you go to a restaurant, it takes you 10 minutes to figure out what you're going to order. Right. Cause you, Oh, I don't know, maybe that one, but oh, I don't know. That's maybe a little bit more. Uh, it's going to have a higher sugar content. Ooh, that one's more calories, but oh, da, 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 right. And if, if you're a person that goes into things like that, you're okay. complicating your life when you don't have to. Right. Yeah. So again, you can do something as simple as take a coin with you. I know we, we don't have coins. We're not using those anymore. Right. But yeah. it's probably a flip a coin app on your phone that you can probably use too. Right. I have coins. Where do you <laughs> live? <laughs> you have coins. Oh, or bring your Dungeons and Dragons dice. We actually roll oh, there you stuff go. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But, but you could do something like that or set yourself a time limit. I remember hearing, I can't remember the guy's name, but he would only give himself 10 or 20 seconds to decide what he's going to order on the menu. Yeah. Right. So again, do you want to spend five or 10 minutes going over, playing in your head, increasing your stress level, worrying about making a bad decision? Because that annoys those of us that make the decision in 10 seconds. Well, and <laughs> you take away 10 minutes of conversation that you could have had with the right. people that you're with of being present with them, yeah. right? And worst case is you don't like it, you send it back, you order something else, or right. you just eat it, right? Or you don't get it next time, you know, or you can also yeah. look at the menu online. I've done that where it's like, I'll see everything's online now. See what they have in advance if you're that person, look through the menu and know you've saved that time. You can look in the car on the way, you know, there's just, there's all these little life hacks. I hate that term, but I mean, that's what, you know, uh, ways that we can make our lives more convenient and a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And we just gave you a couple. So. Yeah. Cause we all know everybody's everybody, you know, we, we tend to make things more complex than they need to be, which is an unnecessary reason for increased stress level. Yep. So again, I'm guessing that you're sitting out there going, you know, I wish I wasn't so stressed. Well, then start doing things different, <laughs> right? Because a lot of times, again, as we talked about at the beginning, we don't want to admit it, 
Yeah. But we're the cause of a lot of the stress and other things that are going on in our life. And it's our choice. Yeah. We can choose something different, which yeah. is going to choose to a different outcome. Absolutely. It's all about, I mean, we've talked about this so many episodes. It's all about making a different choice. So make one little change today, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I decided I'm going to get everyone gift baskets for Christmas. I got a thing in the mail. They have pre-made gift baskets, free delivery. I'm done shopping. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Put in the yeah. address is done. Done. So you'll be getting your gift basket with no noise machine in it. Oh, no, nope, that's wasn't. what I really want. Now I know uh, what I want for Christmas. Well, talk to <laughs> Allie about that. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Right. Okay. I might have to. I might have to now. Oh, no. Okay. <sighs> well, good. Please have a couple good hints and just, you know, make a just make one little different change, one choice. See where you're overwhelmed and start to eliminate stuff or pass it off to other people. Exactly. Cool. Right. Yay. Good. Well, that's, I guess we're done. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're finished talking. Uh, I'm Kathy Gruber. I can be reached at kathygruber.com. I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. And yeah, like Kathy said, you know, just make one, one choice different. You know, each day you might feel like you're not accomplishing very much, but I promise you after 30, 60, 90 days, you're going to turn around and those little micro decisions that you make that are different each day you're going to be amazed at how far you've come. So make a little change today. Have a great day. We'll catch you on the next episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. See ya.